Good morning, Kingdom Kids. We are here today to talk about uh, Paul and another story that is going to remind us just how faithful God is for us. So grab your Bibles and let's get started. I know some of you have probably seen in the news lately um, about Hurricane Laura that just came through. And there have been some other big storms and probably will be some more storms this summer still. I want you to think about a hurricane, or for us usually we experience tornadoes where we live. Uh, what do those storms have in common? It's the wind, right? Um, both of those storms have the potential to do huge amounts of damage because of really strong and crazy winds. And I want you to picture being in one of those types of storms, but being on a boat in the middle of the ocean or in the middle of a sea. And think how scary and crazy and intense that would be. Um, just close your eyes for a minute and picture what it would be like to be on a boat and have that kind of storm come up and know that there's a chance your boat is not going to make it through the storm. The story that we're going to read and talk about today has to do with a shipwreck. So I've got a picture here of um, just one example of a shipwreck. And this, is, this was created by some kind of storm or wind, um, something that damaged the ship so badly that it started coming apart and sinking. Okay. So that sets us up for our story today. Now some background. It's important to remember to have context for where we're reading in Scripture. So we're going to be reading in Acts 27. And at this point, the Apostle Paul has been imprisoned by Jewish leaders. These leaders are accusing Paul of causing trouble and leading Christians against them. Now these charges are not true. They're false. But Paul was still put in prison for them by Felix, who was the Roman governor of Judea. Later, when, Fis when Festus, the new governor, so they have had a, a ruler switch, Festus heard Paul's case, Paul was able to appeal his case to Caesar, the Roman emperor. Now, this is only possible because Paul is a Roman citizen. He was born a Roman citizen. In order for Caesar to hear Paul's case, Paul was taken to Rome. So Paul is in the middle of his imprisonment, but he's being taken to Rome. He's being taken across the Mediterranean Sea by boat to get there. In Paul's time, the safest time to sail across the Mediterranean Sea was March through late May. So kind of springish, um, early summer. Paul's ship, though, was going to Rome during one of the riskiest travel times, September to October. So just about now, a little bit later than it is now. Before the ship sailed, Paul went to Julius, the centurion, as well as the pilot of the ship and the ship's owner to warn them of the dangers they're going to face. But the men set sail anyway. They're hoping they can reach a safe port before winter and wait there until it's safe to continue to roam. So Paul knows that this trip is going to be risky. Everybody on the boat knows that it's going to be risky, but they've set sail anyway. All right, so what I want you to do is grab your Bibles, turn to Acts 27. Now this passage is kind of long, so I'm going to summarize as we're going. We're reading verses 13 to 44. All right. Here we go. Now when the south wind blew gently, supposing that they had obtained their purpose, they weighed anchor and sailed along Crete, close to the shore. But soon a tempestuous wind, that's like a really strong and wild wind, called the Northeaster, struck down the land. And when the ship was caught and could not face the wind, we gave way to it and were driven along. Running under the lee of a small island called Cauda, we managed with difficulty to secure the ship's boat. After hoisting it up, they used supports to undergird the ship. Then, fearing that they would run aground on the Sirtis, they lowered the gear, and thus they were driven along. Since we were violently storm-tossed, they began the next day to jettison the cargo. And on the third day, they threw the ship's tackle overboard with their own hands. So they've just set sail. A strong, fierce storm has begun and they're kind of pitching everything overboard they can to see if they can survive the storm. When neither sun nor stars appeared for many days and no small tempest lay on us, all hope of our being saved was at last abandoned. So the storm keeps getting worse and they have no hope of being saved. Since they had been without food for a long time, Paul stood up, um, Paul stood up among them and said, Men, you should have listened to me and not have set sail from Crete and incurred this injury and loss. Remember, he warns them this was dangerous. 
Yet now I urge you to take heart, for there will be no loss of life among you, but only of the ship. For this very night there stood before me an angel of the God to whom I belong and whom I worship. And he said, Do not be afraid, Paul. You must stand before Caesar. And behold, God has granted you all those who sail with you. So take heart, men, for I have faith in God that it will be exactly as I have been told. But we must run aground on some island. So an angel appeared to Paul and told him that even though the ship is going to crash, all their lives would be saved, everyone on the boat. Even though there was danger, God assured Paul that they're going to reach his goal, the goal of, of getting to Rome so that he can appeal. The crew on the ship is afraid that they're going to die. So here's what happened next. When the 14th night had come, as we were being driven across the Adriatic Sea, about midnight the sailors suspected that they were nearing land. So they took a sounding and found 20 fathoms. A little later on, they took a sounding again and found 15 fathoms. Now these are navigational terms. It means that they're, um, they're guessing how far it's going to be until they, until they can reach land and how deep the water is where they're at. So in fearing that we might run on the rocks, they let down four acres from the stern and prayed for day to come. And as the sailors were seeking to escape from the ship and had lowered the ship's boat into the sea under pretense of laying out anchors from the boat, from the bow, Paul said to the centurion and the soldiers, Unless these men stay in the ship, you cannot be saved. Then the soldiers cut away the ropes of the ship's boat and let it go. So some men tried to escape on a smaller boat. They didn't believe they were going to be saved. They um, put down a little boat. They said they were laying anchors, but they put down a little boat and tried to escape. Paul said, You have to stay on the boat to be saved. This is what I was told. So they cut that little boat off and let it go. Let's see. As the day was about to dawn, Paul urged them all to take some food, saying, Today is the fourteenth day that you have continued in suspense and without food, having taken nothing. Therefore, I urge you to take some food, for it will give you strength, for not a hair is to perish from the head of any of you. So fourteen days have passed, two weeks, and he's saying, You guys have got to eat. Trust my God. He said that none of us are going to perish. When he said these things, he took bread and gave thank and giving thanks to God in the presence of all, he broke it and began to eat. Then they were all encouraged and to ate some food themselves. We were in all two hundred and seventy six persons in the ship, and when they had eaten though, they lightened the ship, throwing out the wheat into the sea. Now, when it was day, they did not recognize the land, but they noticed a bay with the beach on which they planned, if possible, to run the ship ashore. So they cast off the anchors and left them in the sea, at the same time loosening the ropes that tied the rudders. Then hoisting the foresail to the wind, they made for the beach. But striking a reef, they ran the vessel aground. The bow stuck and remained immovable, and the stern was being broken up by the surf. The soldier's plan was to kill the prisoners, lest any should swim away and escape. But the centurion, wishing to save Paul, kept them from carrying out their plan. He ordered those who could swim to jump overboard first and make it to land, and the rest on planks or on pieces of the ship. And so it was that all were brought safely to land. So they get close to the land. The ship starts to break apart. And they're wanting to kill the prisoners, so they won't escape. But the centurion keeps them from, from carrying that plan out. He wants to save Paul. And then those that can swim to swim to land, and those that can't float to land on planks from the boat as the boat breaks up as it becomes shipwrecked, like in this picture we had, right? All right. So that's kind of a crazy story. That's exciting. Now, our Bible words for today are Hebrews 13, 5. God says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And that is exactly what happened to Paul. He did not leave him nor forsake him. He had a plan for him, and he provided a means of escape. When boats are near shore or near a reef, they put their anchors down, just like they did in the story. They want to be weighed down so that if um, there's a dangerous area nearby or winds come or waves come, the boat doesn't move, the boat stays. It, it holds them safely there. So when storms in our life or winds of suffering threaten to blow us down or waves of fear overcome us, we need an anchor. And this story, that is in scripture is not just about what happened to Paul and how God saved him, how God protected him and, and provided a way of escape for him and the men on that ship. It's not just about that. It also shows us how God is an anchor in our life, how God provides for us. Now think about what is the one way that we need God most. I mean, I, we, I know that we have storms in life that, that happen, whether it's an illness 
or a family member being really sick or um, something financially with our family or something scary that happens at school or a time when uh, we're feeling lonely. We have storms like that that hit us every day, every week, every month. But what is the one time in your life that you most need God? It's our salvation, right? Because we are born into sin, and because we do continue to sin, we need rescuing. We need someone to be our anchor and provide that salvation. And that's what God does. He sent Jesus to redeem us. He sent Jesus to cover those sins, to provide a means of escape. And His Jesus' perfect life and death on the cross brought us back, saved us, redeemed us, and gave us that salvation that we need. So our faith word for today is redeemed, um, because that is the picture of what God did for us. Just like he did for Paul when he rescued him off the ship, God redeemed us. He was our anchor. So our anchor is kind of our, our picture for the day that I want you to keep in mind, that God is our anchor and holds us safe by sending his son Jesus to die on the cross, He provided a way out um, from sin and death and destruction in our lives. So before we pray, I want to give you a challenge now. I want you to um, take some time today or this week and draw some cards or some pictures for people in your life that God uses to protect you. So that can be uh, your family, that can be policemen, firemen, um, your teachers. It can be child care workers if you go to daycare. Um, Sometimes it's neighbors or even friends or relatives, somebody that God uses to protect you in your life. Uh, Just like God protected Paul during uh, his scary time uh, with the shipwreck. All right, we're going to go ahead and pray. We have one more video lesson coming next week, and then we have some exciting news about the weeks that are going to be coming after that. So have your family uh, be watching their emails and check on Facebook, and we hope to see you soon. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you that we could gather today by video. I thank you that your word um, is a constant reminder of your faithfulness, how you were faithful for Paul and you protected him, and also how you're faithful for us, how you sent your son to die for us on the cross, and how you constantly um, provide what we need and protect us. Uh, Lord, I ask that you would be with all of our friends this week. I ask that you would provide health and safety as they're going about their days and they're going to school. And Lord, I especially ask that you would remind us of uh, your redeeming grace in everything that we do. In your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. Have a great week, Kingdom Kids.